Cheers, guys. Woo! What's up, guys? Garrett at Resolve.dev. That was a lemon ginger cayenne shot. An old witch doctor in New Orleans that I may or may not have made up said that was a good way to stay healthy. And there's stuff going around nowadays if you haven't been paying attention. So I'm trying weird stuff to stay healthy. If you have any old wives' tale hacks to stay healthy, put it down in the comments below and I might try it in the intro of my next video. So today we're going to talk about how to optimize your LinkedIn and your GitHub. First off, LinkedIn. Step one, make a LinkedIn account. Go to LinkedIn.com, make an account. LinkedIn is basically Facebook for businesses, companies, professionals, stuff like that. It's a lot of people just going, I'm so thankful I have my job. This is the best company ever. I love it. It's awesome. And I'm, I'm pretty cynical. Kat, you can't get in the video. Sorry, bud. I know you want attention, but you have to get on the floor. Yeah, I'm pretty cynical and more in line with Josh Fluke when it comes to corporations and stuff like that. But it's good to have one, good for networking and good to apply for jobs at. So first things first. When you make a LinkedIn, this you wanna fill out everything on the page to as much as you can. They're gonna have a little bar right here that will go from like zero to 100%. If you get 100%, they are like, this is an all-star profile. And I think they, I wanna say they boost you in the algorithm and the search results if you have an all-star profile. I don't know, I'm, I'm making that up right now. So it may or may not be true. A lot of what I say may or may not be true especially the thing about the witch doctor that told me about the shot in New Orleans that I took. Anyway, first section here, you wanna have a nice little background uh, picture. I just Googled Dallas skyline and found a good picture, use that. Your picture, it want, you want your picture to be better than mine. This is an example of a great picture here. Uh, you wanna have like a nice button up shirt, don't have to have a tie. If you have a tie, that's awesome, but just look sharp and clean and crisp like this. You wanna look professional. Don't have a picture from last Thursday at the barbecue where you're in a wife beater and you're holding a beer. Have a, pre have a professional picture. And then you wanna make sure everything here is filled out. First name, last name, headline. Headline is just like, kinda like where you're at in life. Like I'm a web developer at Tri Digital. Um, if you were in college, just put future computer science major graduate at Harvard University or wherever you're in college at or currently studying to become a front-end web developer, currently aspiring to be a successful street pharmacist, whatever your aspirations are, put those there. And then you'll put your current position, which is mine's the same thing. I just copied mine. I'm not good at the headlines or the about me's or cover letters. So be more creative than I am. And then you got your education, where you're at, and then this is the important stuff profile information. So this is what it looks like to a new person minus this bar on the right side here. It's got the picture, the information here, where I work, my job, and then websites. So I linked up my GitHub and my personal website so people that look at my portfolio can easily access those. Below that, we've got the about you or about me. Mine, like I said, not too creative. It's just, hey, I used to work in finance, didn't like it, studied web development, became a web developer. So. Short, sweet, to the point. Below that, you've got your activity. You wanna have more fun activity than I do. You wanna actually comment on stuff. I'm antisocial in person and online. I just like stuff, so mine doesn't look too interesting. But we're gonna discard that. Make sure you have a good about, about you, and then it'll show your activity. Below that, we've got your experience. So what you wanna do here, basically copy and paste your resume. As long as you have a good resume. If you don't have a good resume, look in the description, send me your resume, I'll give you feedback on it. It's gonna be in a video though, so be okay with that. I'll block out your name, number, and contact info, but if you're not okay with it being in a video, probably not gonna get reviewed unless you pay me. But, so we've got where I'm currently working, web developer, try digital marketing, how long I've been working there, and then we've got the bullet points. Can we edit this? Yeah, if we edit this right here, this is what the format looks like. Employer type, full-time, didn't know that was a thing. I think they added that, it's probably new, but I put that there now. Uh, the location, I currently work at this role, and then you've got the description. So this, you wanna kinda go with a bullet point list of what you're doing at that job. Mine for this job, honestly, it's not too, too fancy, not too good. 
Um, if we look at my previous work experience, those are way better. Like TD Ameritrade, I was a trader one, placed stock mutual fund and complex option trades for clients, answered customer questions, handled 30 to 50 calls a day, generated leads for sales reps that ended up bringing in 500K in net new assets. And then I need to add that one though, cause that's not there. But yeah, just have bullet points of the high points of your job. Um, maybe you work at Facebook and you implemented an algorithm that returns search results search results 25% faster than it did before. That'd be a cool little bullet point to put here. And with this, you don't have to worry about keeping your resume on one page. You can put your full work experience. So I have my work experience going back to 2013, which is a long time for me because I'm 26. But if you're older, I might go back even further. After that, we've got your education. Also for these, down here, you can upload external documents, photos, videos, or presentations. If you have anything like that relative to your job that you can upload, put those in there. I think he has some, see he has some awesome pictures here. Put stuff like that, makes your profile look way better. <clears throat> then we have education. So I have where I went to college. If you didn't go to college, no big deal. You don't have to go to college to be a web developer. I majored in marketing, so not really relevant to being a web developer, but it's on there. Ideally, you have a digital copy of your diploma. You hit upload or link and you add it there. If you have like a sheet of the courses you took in college and your GPA and your grades, link that, upload that, as long as your GPA is good. And I say, in this, I don't know what GPAs are like outside of the States, but in the States, if you have less than a 3.0 GPA, don't put that on anything when you're applying for jobs because that's not good. Don't advertise what's not good. And then I studied at Free Code Camp. Ideally, you completed Free Code Camp and you have all six certificates. There might be more now, actually. I haven't checked Free Code Camp in a long time, but if I click on this, it brings up the, hmm, interesting. Oh, we click on view, there we go. Now it brings up my certificate that I completed the responsive web design certificate. If you're trying to learn code, Free Code Camp is a great place to start and it's free as, as the name says. So there's that. I've got the dates I studied there. And then I've got Team Treehouse. If you do Team Treehouse, ideally you complete Team Treehouse, the tech degree programs, and you get a little certificate that you can put here. I didn't complete Team Treehouse. I have ADD and don't finish a lot of stuff. So I did like three fourths of the front end developer tech degree and then switched to the full stack to Java, full, ah, full stack JavaScript tech degree. And I didn't complete either one before I got a job. So I don't have the certificates, so I can't link those up. But what I could do is link up a few of the projects I made because I have those linked up on my portfolio. So if we go to my portfolio here, GHUS 13, we go down to the projects. So this is one of the projects. We'll just copy the link there, put that there, hit add. And then I need to edit the metadata on the project because it's not pulling in anything. I'm pretty sure if I put a, I could basically take this picture and put that in the metadata. And then I believe LinkedIn would pull that in instead of this picture, which is the one of these right here, a really low quality thumbnail version of it. But that's something I need to do. Like I said, my LinkedIn profile is not perfect. This, that's why I'm making this video to help you make yours perfect. Those, cannot, those that cannot do, teach. Awful quote, but hey, whatever. Below that, you've got your licenses and certifications. For the free code camp up here, Okay, you can link multiple certificates. Discard, come on. Did I just remove that? Oh well. But I got the cert certificates from uh, Free Code Camp, so I would also include those here. You can just click See Credentials and it pops up. It's way easier for them to access. Uh, with Free Code Camp, you'd probably have six. So there's that. If you did the, free, uh, the Team Treehouse tech degree programs, you could do that. If you did front end masters bootcamp, you might be able to, I don't know if you get a certificate from that or not, but you could probably email them and have them make something for you possibly, I don't know. Um, and then any other certifications or licenses you have, like if you completed courses on Udemy, put certificate links to that on here. I've got like my 63 and seven from when I was a broker. So I linked to brokercheck.com, which has my profile as a broker. Now, up next, we have the skills and endorsements. Now, 
With LinkedIn, you kind of just want to like add everybody you can so you get a lot of connections. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, so I, that's pretty much taken care of for me because a lot of my videos are me taking the LinkedIn skill assessments, which if you need help with those, click on, actually look in the description, I'll have links to all the videos, all the skill assessment videos that I have created so far in the description. If you need any help with these, you can kind of get an idea of what the questions are like on the quizzes. I don't pass all of them, and the questions are different usually. Like, I believe they have a test bank, and they'll pull in 15 questions from that test bank. The test banks, from what I've heard, are pretty small, because I've had a lot of people get the same questions I have, but up to you to pass it. You gotta kind of know what you're talking about. They don't have assessments for everything, so like sales, direct sales, retail sales, there's not really a way they can assess you on that, so. If you want to connect on LinkedIn, my LinkedIn's in the description. We can be, we can be BFFs on there or connections. I don't know what you would call somebody you're connected with on LinkedIn, a connection, I guess that works. And then we can just like endorse each other and get our skills up to 99. Cause that's, that's the goal to get everything on here up to 99. So if you go add me on LinkedIn, just plus everything and then we'll be awesome. But you wanna have your top skills here. So I have CSS, JavaScript, React. Um, HTML is one of my other top skills. That one's like, that one's got higher rank, but hey, I wanna get a job as a React developer or a full stack developer. So I'm adding that there because I've got seven endorsements on that. And then take these skills. If you can pass any of these, even if you can't, uh, they expire after a year. They probably don't carry too much weight with getting a job. I know, LinkedIn looks at that when you're applying for jobs on LinkedIn. So it probably helps us like maybe 5%. And then if you fail one, you can try again after 90 days. Like these are the ones that I failed, Bash, Python, React, TSQL, WordPress. And then these are the ones I passed and I have to retake that in next month, apparently. It's disappointing. <clears throat> so take those, pass those if you can. Accomplishments. If you have any cool accomplishments, like you started a club, you started the Rocket Club at Louisiana Tech, you started Toastmasters Club at Louisiana Tech, you are an official Toastmaster and you win awards when you speak at Toastmasters conferences. I don't know what other accomplishments you could have. Uh, maybe you spoke at uh, Free Code Camp. Maybe you spoke at something else. Put your accomplishments here, because that's gonna be awesome. Uh, they can be publications if you've written blog posts. You can link to a few of your blog posts here. If you have any patents, that's kind of awesome. Put a patent there. Uh, the courses you've taken, you can put your course names here. I don't know if I'd add all of my college courses, probably just the ones that are specific to jobs that, are you look, that you're looking for. So if I had taken any computer science courses in college, I'd probably link to those as long as I had, uh, had good grades. Was it asking for a GPA associated with No, it doesn't ask for the GPA or anything like that, but I'd still want to make sure that those are courses that I did good in. Um, honors and awards, projects, test score, languages. So like if you take the ACT, I think that's a big thing in the South. Um, it's like a college entrance exam. Put your ACT score. If you take the SAT up North, put your SAT score. If you speak other languages, like I'm fluent in sarcasm, but that's not a professional language, so I probably wouldn't put that on here organizations if you're associated with any organizations like i probably need to add react dallas meetup on here I, I think that'd be a cool organization to add and then last we have the interests here your interests they're not super important for employers but this is what the profile will look like basically after you got it filled out got your education got your certificates they can just click on that see my certs and then they can see my organizations. They don't even get to see my interests, it doesn't matter. So that's how to optimize your LinkedIn. If you wanna apply for jobs, you click on jobs here. Um, you search for whatever job you want, like web developer, react developer, look in location, type in your location or wherever you wanna search and then click search. If you want to add new people, click on my network and you can see all the pending invitations that I haven't accepted yet because I'm I'm like I said, I'm antisocial. I don't like to accept people and talk to people and my communication skills are pretty trash, but hey, whatever. Uh, you can go to connections and then you can just add random people. But yeah, that's LinkedIn. Uh, if you want me to check out your LinkedIn, give you a little bit of feedback, again, I'll probably put it in a video, but look in the description. 
send me an email with your LinkedIn link or resume or portfolio link and I will make a video giving you feedback on it. It's gonna be on YouTube, so again, just warning you. Now, on to GitHub. How do you make a good GitHub? Well, first off, just like with LinkedIn, go make a GitHub. If you don't have a GitHub and you wanna be a developer, that's an important part. We wanna go for the checkerboard look here because that says, hey, I'm hungry, I'm coding every day, I wanna learn this stuff and get it down. So that means that you should commit everything you do to GitHub. I have almost 60 repositories, which seems kind of like a lot. Um, I could delete some, but if you delete them, then you lose the green checker marks associated with that repo. So that's why I have repos. I have repos going back to 2017 when I was trying to learn Python and doing Team Trias' Python project or Python tech degree. And then I have repos from 2019 or sorry, 2018 when I was trying to become a developer and then stuff that I've built since I've become a developer as well. So this is what your repos should look like if they, if it's like a project and you're trying to get a job. You wanna lay out your repo so it's easy for the employer to understand what's going on, what this is, and ideally have a link so they can go see the project. Ideally you wanna have the project hosted somewhere. If it is a static website, you can use GitHub Pages if it's a static website built with like React or something like that, you can use Netlify. If it's, um, you can also use like Heroku or maybe CodePen or Code Sandbox. I don't know if I'd recommend those. I'd probably go with Netlify or Heroku first. But right here, we've got the description of the project. So this is just a MERN stack to-do list. Um, Mongo, Express, React, Node. It's a to-do list that connects to a Node server I built and that connects to Atlas MongoDB and stores my to-do list stuff. It's probably super insecure and you could probably hack it pretty easy. Not that you'd wanna hack it. I mean, it's just to-do list stuff. And then we have a link to the project. So like I said, make sure you host it. Now, in the readme, displayed right below your project have the title here if you need the markdown cheat sheet that github has i'll have a link to that in the description as well um, markdown files so this is this the readme should be in a dot md file and it is if you want to do an h1 that's just one hashtag if you want to do an h2 that's just two pound signs if you want to do an h3 that's just four hashes or three hashes sorry but i'll have a link to this in the description Speaking of descriptions, that's what's next. You'll have a description here. Uh, just talking about the project, created a to-do list app that connects to a node server and interacts with MongoDB on Atlas and executes CRUD operations. Speaking of CRUD operations, anytime you're trying to learn a new language like React, Vue, Angular, Python, one of the first things you should do is create a to-do list app because that will teach you how to create, read, update, and delete in that programming language. And that's pretty much all you need to know to get stuff done in that programming language. If there's another letter that I need to add here or that I'm not aware of, let me know. Maybe it's C-R-U-D-S and S does something cool, I don't know. My knowledge is limited and I acknowledge that and there's a lot I have to learn. So anyway, after that, we're gonna have a link to view the project. So I actually should probably hyperlink view project and then get rid of this. We're gonna do that right now. So. This is what the markdown file looks like. You link stuff just like you would in HTML, or you can. So we're gonna copy the A link, paste that right there, get rid of the C, the project, and then we're gonna commit the changes. And hopefully, yeah, that is updated now, but we're gonna remove this line break because we want that right below it. There we go. Now we can click on view project and it brings up the project. I've already got it spun up here because Heroku takes some time to spin up the project sometimes. Cause it, like I say in the disclaimer here, Heroku has to spin up the React app, then it spins up the node server. So it might take a while to load. It also breaks if this is removed right now. So if you wanna check out my project, I'm gonna have my link to the GitHub in the description as well. I have a lot of stuff in the description, but you can check it out. Just don't delete this last one, it breaks. I'm gonna fix it this weekend because I realize a lot of you are probably gonna go try and break it now, but hey. But yeah, you can do like new item or like test or actually we'll just do like do laundry add item and my app hasn't been refreshed for a while and it's not spun up. So 
actually somebody might have deleted there we go it's working all right so do laundry yeah if this is deleted it just stays on that loading screen forever because i didn't write my code the best way i could so add item and you can edit the item you can delete that and just do test and then you can exit it off your to-do list so have a place where they can view the project, make it easy, easy for them to view the project. You don't have to have this part, this is my to-do list for the project. Fix bug where it breaks when there are no items. Make it responsive, and then I wanna add user authentication. Authentication, excuse me. And then I also want to um, make a React Native version so I can add this to the Apple App Store and pull up my app on my phone. I got a Mac VM installed on my computer so I can program it on a Mac basically and make it work with the Apple, with the Apple App Store. <clears throat> now, something else that would be really cool to do that I haven't done yet is that you can add YouTube videos. Uh, let's just jump down to that link here. So they can't be added directly, but you can add an image with a link to the video like this. So you would have the thumbnail for your video and then you would link it to YouTube. And what you could do is if you can't host your project for any reason, build it locally and re screen record you talking about the project. So I could be like, hey, this is my Mongo or my uh, Mern, my Mern to-do list app. Um, this is how it works, blah, blah, blah. This is, you can delete items, you can edit the item. Uh, don't delete me. Click add and you can just kind of talk about your project. So potential employers or people who want to see your project can view it. That'd also be kind of cool to start doing for documentation for projects. That is how to make your GitHub look prettier. Again, that's my GitHub. If y'all want to come be friends on there and star all my repos, so they look like they're important and cool. Uh, you want to have your name. You want to have your description here. So I'm just 26 years old, web developer, at digital marketing. Like I said, not too good at about me's. And then you've got your employer, where you work and or live, your email, and then a link to your portfolio. Make sure this is a picture of you, preferably something like semi-professional. I don't have any like really good professional pictures. This is like one of the best pictures I have. I need to take more pictures. But you can throw on like a suit and just stand up against the wall, put your phone on timer, and take a picture of you standing there in a suit. I've seen people do that before and it works. I'm just too lazy to do that. So these are the followers, these are the people I'm following. And yeah, that is GitHub. So hope this helps you out. Um, if this did help you out, smash that like button. And if you need anything reviewed, like I said, emails in the description, um, throw me a comment if you have any questions and I will See you next time. Peace. Round one.